Now on Sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com. A deadly 6.8 magnitude earthquake shook Morocco Friday, leaving thousands dead. An urgent search for survivors is underway. 25 News Now is following the story. Turning now to Pennsylvania and the manhunt for escape killer Danilo Calvacante. His latest spotting shows he's made a change to his appearance. We're tracking him. Across the crossroads, Ganeda police are searching for two men wanted in a string of store burglaries. Police say they need your help in taking them down. We have how you can tip straight ahead. One of the outside temperatures, feel like temperatures starting in the 70s and 80s, and definitely hot by the afternoon time today. What about rain chances this week and maybe a little cooler temperatures as well? We'll take a look coming up. Well, Edna and Refurio, the talk of the crossroads, see the controversy coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Carolina Astrain. I'm Trey Mining. And today is the 11th day of September 2023. The time is now 631 on our Monday morning and it is also Patriot Day and National Day of Service and Remembrance in honor of the 9-11 tragedy. Trey, okay. I remember I was in eighth grade when the news broke. I was uh, in history class, oddly enough. And I remember things never being quite the same after 9-11, especially when it comes to airport security and, and security surveillance so. in our so. country. If you have to do what you have to do. You have to increase the security and make sure everyone's safe. And I was in Mississippi State at the time uh, studying meteorology. I was over there. I remember waking up that morning, turning on the TV and saying, why is the same movie on every channel? <laughs> and then, then I thought, saw what it was. I just couldn't just un believable. I took all my VHS tapes with my favorite animes and, and uh, recorded the news over them because it felt like it was important to document everything um, during that news so. cycle. One of the biggest events of the entire country ever. And we still feel those repercussions today. We'll have a story on the people that are still feeling the pain from that day's loss. Mm -hmm. And Trey, how's it looking out there for us? We see some chances of rain. Yes, not today, but the chances of rain are coming in, in time. Thankful for that. Fairly decent chances as well. So hang in there, folks. It's been a while, but we'll get there. Looking at the temperatures currently in the 70s and 80s along the immediate coast, 83 degrees in Sea Drift this morning. There are 80 degrees in Port Navaca. And to the north, of course, 71 degrees here in Victoria and 70s from Hallisville to Quero back down to Refugio and down to Sea Drift again, of course. And the day planner for Quarrel throughout the day, starting off in the 70s, 90 by noon time, 97 degrees by four o'clock in the afternoon. A few high clouds from time to time, no rain as of yet. I say yet because rain chances are on the rise. I feel like temperatures are going throughout the day, starting off in the 80s along the coast, 70s inland. And by the time the sun heats up the atmosphere, it rises pretty rapidly. By 10 a.m. or so, we're in the well into the 90s, and getting near 100 degrees by noontime hour. And that number will continue about 100 to 101, maybe through about 5 o'clock in the afternoon or so. And we'll cool off again in the overnight, of course. Temperatures on the hot side. Rain chances, well, increasing as well. Notice no 105, 110 heat index values for us. But definitely a trend toward the fall time of the year. Get a front through here, maybe even cooler than that. Could we see low 90s for highs? That could be a good possibility. When will that be, though? We'll let you know coming up in the seven day outlook a little bit later on. Carolina? Thank you, Trey. Rescue efforts are underway for people who may be trapped under rubble from that deadly earthquake in Morocco. The death toll from Friday's earthquake climbed to more than 2,100 and more than 2,400 people were hurt. The 6.8 magnitude quake was Morocco's deadliest in more than six decades. Rescuers in the military could be seen trying to shift heavy debris in the village of Moulay Ibrahim. Doctors Without Borders has also said it is prepared to respond to the earthquake. Relief workers face the challenge of reaching the worst affected villages in the High Atlas, a rugged mountain range where settlements are often remote and many houses crumbled. We'll go to Washington for more on the quake later on Sunrise. Today marks 22 years since the attacks of 9-11. For many Americans, that September morning is a distant memory, but for many others, the pain is a constant presence. Their stories are ones we cannot and should not forget. Hours before the official tribute to the victims of the World Trade Center attacks 22 years ago today. Robert Gray worked for NORAD that day, monitoring U.S. airspace. He visited the World Trade Center site last night. As we walked into this area, 
it, it, it made me uh, start to weep. 2,753 people died in lower Manhattan that day, and just this weekend, the remains of two more were identified by the medical examiner. 40% of those lost are still unidentified. We saw this plane flying at a very low altitude, extremely fast, but was so low I could read on the fuselage the word American. Joe Pfeiffer was the first fire chief on the scene. His job sending firefighters in to save lives, including his own brother, Kevin. I ordered him as I ordered many of my other fire officers to take their unit and go upstairs to evacuate the building. Kevin died in the collapse of the towers, but many others were saved by the men and women who rushed into those buildings, knowing they might not come out alive. James Brosey, president of the Uniformed Fire Officers Association, lost his father, a fire department lieutenant who responded to the scene. He died just this year from a 9-11 related cancer. 341 members of New York's fire department have now succumbed to ground zero related illnesses. Unfortunately, the exposure of that day and the days that followed during the rescue and recovery efforts have really started to take its toll. My brother was also in the collapse at the time. Uh, he has some other debilitating uh, side effects from that exposure as well. For Robert Gray, reflecting at the site last night, the lesson 22 years later is this. We need to be ready for anything. The testing of remains all these years later is part of a solemn pledge to keep identifying victims for as long as it takes so that the families of as many victims as possible can have closure. ABC News Live will bring you coverage of today's remembrance services throughout the day. Derek Dennis, ABC News. Continuing coverage on the ongoing manhunt in Pennsylvania, there was another sighting of escaped Pennsylvania convict Danilo Calvacante. Surveillance images from the U.S. Marshal Service show Calvacante in the Phoenixville area of Chester County. Calvacante can now be seen without a beard and in different clothing, a yellow or green hooded sweatshirt, a black baseball style hat, green prison pants and white shoes. Authorities say he was operating a 2020 white Ford Transit van that was reported stolen and that the van was later found abandoned in a field behind a barn in Pennsylvania's East Nantmeal Township. A reward of up to $20,000 is being offered for tips that lead to Calvacantes arrest. Ganado police working on a string of break-ins Sunday morning. They say several Dollar Generals were hit by the suspects you are seeing on your screen. What we know so far is that the suspects are two men. These are video images of the suspects in action Sunday at around 5 o'clock in the morning. GPD is asking anyone with information to come forward. Here's a number to contact them, 361-771-2800. Remember, all tips can remain anonymous. More charges filed against a man in custody at the Matagorda County Jail. Last week, we reported on 62-year-old Michael Elliott, who was arrested in Bay City for parole violation for murder. Elliott was taken in on that charge along with several other warrants, which were all out of Calhoun County. This morning, Elliott faces an additional charge of a terroristic threat. A charge filed Friday by the Matagorda County Sheriff's Office. Calhoun County has 10 days to extradite Elliott from Matagorda County. The Powerball jackpot has once again surpassed half a billion dollars after no one hit the grand prize in Saturday night's drawing. An estimated $522 million with a cash option of $252.4 million will be on the line for tonight's Powerball drawing. Despite no one taking home the big prize, there were two players who won $1 million in an additional ticket in Florida matched the five white balls but won $2 million thanks to the power play multiplier. Powerball is played in 45 states as well as Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads, today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. The time is now 6.39 on your Monday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. Victoria ISD special board meeting Saturday doubled as a workshop. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. President Biden is vowing to help in the rescue after a 6.8 magnitude earthquake rocked Morocco. The latest coming up. And the tropics still active. We still have Margo and Lee out there in the Atlantic Ocean. Anything near us? Well, and where are these storms going? We'll take a look coming up after, after the break.
Good morning, good morning. And look at the tropics, still quite active on the outside there in the tropics. This, we're right at the peak of hurricane season. Typically, we see things in the tropics going on during this time of year. And it's definitely seeing that at least two storms here we have to look at. Margo, which is way out here in the uh, Atlantic Ocean, and it's, it's weaker than Lee, of course, and it's continued to move to the north. There's a coordinates if you're tracking on your chart and your current information on it. And it'll continue to move to the north and maybe get up to Category 1 hurricane before it moves into Kukula water and up into the northern parts of the Atlantic Ocean. While Lee is the big boy here, big storm here, still continues to be rather intense and moving to the west-northwest and making it more of a turn toward the direct north to head toward the next couple of days down the road. And maybe, maybe, maybe clipping and uh, getting near uh, New England, but making its way toward Nova Scotia. Maybe the eastern part of Maine coming up toward the end of the week. We'll keep watching it, of course. It's proved to be a big system up there, moving quickly, though. For us around here in the Gulf of Mexico, pretty much devoid of anything, thankfully. Rain chances headed our way eventually. We'll take a look at that later on in the full forecast. Carolina. Trey, big time game, big time controversy. Sports reporter Zach Brown tells you why two fan bases are split. So for week three of our CFL coverage, our game of the week drew quite a bit of attention. So just to start you off, Keelan Brown is going to hit his man just before the end of the first half to cut the Edna lead to just six. Now Edna trying to hang on to its lead. This play here. Ruled an interception even though the ball hit the ground. Now, Edna was getting ready to punt anyways. That play may not have mattered much. The real controversy right here. So Edna responded to a Furio score in overtime goes for two and doesn't get it. The only problem is that Rafirio was also supposed to go for two since it was double overtime. The officials allowed Rafirio to kick the extra point. It was the difference as Edna only lost by one. Now take a look at this tweet from Matt Stepp, one of Texas high school football's most popular figures who helped bring this to many people's attention. Lots of Edna's fan base feeling cheated. Referio fans say that they're just better and that the calls went both ways, but the rules do clearly state both teams should have had to go for two, meaning Referio's extra point should not have counted. Referio won 42 to 41. This was a non-district showdown, has no implications for playoffs, or the standings, just a great showing from two powerhouses. Also, on the night, my Houston Texans lost. Many of your Dallas Cowboys got the win. With your 25 Sports Now, I'm Zach Brown. Thank you, Zach. We want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and on your cell phone, just search Crossroads Today Plus. Now, to the devastating earthquake out of Morocco that has killed more than 2,100 people. The death toll still rising as rescue teams continue searching through the rubble for any signs of life. Some aid teams from other countries standing by, poised to assist. This morning, video shows the violent shakes from the deadly 6.8 magnitude earthquake in Morocco, sending people fleeing for their lives. Here, panic at a wedding ceremony. This man barely escaping. The death toll still rising in Morocco's deadliest earthquake in more than six decades. At least 2,100 people killed, thousands more injured. Rebecca Tremblay visiting from Los Angeles. That's when I realized, I'm oh, oh, something's going wrong. And all the walls literally felt like Play-Doh. And the floor just felt as if it was melting underneath my knees. She ran outside with nothing but her phone. Oh, I thought, I'm going to die. Um, this is a really bad earthquake. And then I called my mom, and I was thinking, this is a good buzz. <laughs> and uh, start crying. The epicenter high in the Atlas Mountains, just south of Marrakesh. Hundreds of first responders and aid workers, both local and international, helping clear debris and recover the dead. This father saying he and his family were at home when the earthquake hit. <laughs> but his eight-year-old son never made it out. At least 17 aftershocks, including a magnitude 4.5 tremor, further damaging buildings, including this woman's family home. Some residents spending a third night in the open, waiting for food, water and electricity. The Biden administration has reached out to the Moroccan government to help provide immediate assistance. We're working expeditiously to ensure American citizens in Morocco are safe, standing ready to provide any necessary assistance to the Moroccan people as well. 
The rescue will grow more challenging as teams traverse mountainous roads to reach the village's hardest hit. Morocco is asking for all the help they can get. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Victoria ISD special board meeting Saturday doubled as a workshop for its board members. At the meeting, the board discussed the district's vision, mission, and the strategic plan. No changes were made to the statements. However, the board clarified the meanings of vision and mission. Each member shared their honest opinions about each item on the agenda. Board President Mike Mercer attributes Dr. Superintendent Quentin Shepard for the board members' willingness to share. With, with different ideas, with different perspectives, and somehow through that process, by being open and honest and sharing with one another, I think we come up with what's best for our community. Mercer wants to thank Victoria for their transparency and trust in the board. He says the community support of the board played the pivotal role in their success. That leads us to your viewer poll. You can scan the QR code on your screen to take part. We ask you, in what way can your school district improve? Okay, let's take a look. 59% of you say teacher pay, okay. 5% of you say classroom size. 13% of you say facility repairs. And 23% of you say other. Thank you for taking part in our viewer poll. And you can go to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to see our other viewer polls throughout the day. All right, the time is now 6.47 on your Monday morning. Still to come, the Writers Guild of America taking a stand against a popular TV show host. Time to celebrate some birthdays and birthday to Jeff. Happy birthday. Hope your day is filled with lots of good things. Love you. And a happy, happy birthday to David. Hope you have a great day. Love you lots from your family. And celebrating a birthday, crooner Harry Connick Jr. turns 56 today. And to see your birthday wish live on 25 Days About Sunrise, come to CrossroadsToday.com. Click on Morning and Home to see the Submit Your Birthday. All right, the time is now 6.48 on our Monday morning. Happy birthday if you're celebrating one today or maybe you did this weekend just like our, our very own director, Oliver, did. <laughs> okay, stay with us. We'll be right back.
Good morning, good morning. Train mining here. Let's take a look at the fuel temperatures throughout the day. Starting off in the 70s, not too bad at all on the outside. It risen really as you work throughout the morning hours and the sun comes up, heats up the atmosphere and the temperatures rocket up pretty rapidly as well. And starting off about, about 11 o'clock will be in the 90s area wide. That's the feel like temperature when the humidity and the air temperature combine what it feels like to the skin. We'll see temperatures in the feel like temperature range at 2 o'clock getting near 100 degrees area wide pretty much from Victoria, northeast, south and west. Not so much south, but maybe a little bit of cooler conditions down there along the beachfront with a little bit of a sea breeze. And then temperatures rising throughout the day, of course, another hot day, anticipated day. No real extreme heat temperatures or heat uh, index values coming up, but it's going to trend toward a little bit more of a fall pattern slowly but surely. And cloudy to partly cloudy skies at the morning time and sunny skies throughout the rest of the day today. Keep those temperatures on the high side. High today, 98 degrees, mostly sunny skies and hot. Easterly winds near 15 miles per hour. Overnight lows will be in the 70s, low 70s. And highs tomorrow again in the upper 90s. Triple digit heat index value. Be careful out there for your Tuesday. Extended forecast for us. Look at this rain chances coming in by midweek into the weekend with lower temperatures. And look at this low 90s coming up for highs Saturday and Sunday. The Writers Guild of America taking a stand against Drew Barrymore. Production on Barrymore's namesake television show will start soon. On Sunday, the actress TV host posted a message on Instagram saying she stands in quote solidarity with the strike. However, the WGA says any sort of writing done on the show violates the strike rules and that they are protesting the move. The Guild, which has more than 11,000 members, went on strike May 2nd. So far, there's no word on a possible end date. Still to come on Sunrise News to know before you go. A father and his eight-year-old son dead after a boat crashed into a barge on Cheatham Lake, about 30 miles west of Nashville. Tragic news out of Tennessee, a father and his eight-year-old son dead after their boat crashed into a barge on Cheatham Lake about 30 miles west of Nashville. This happened Saturday night. Authorities say a towboat was pushing the barge. People on the barge tried to help the victims. They found the father, 36-year-old Stephen White, but he was not breathing. Searchers found his son on Sunday. The crash is under investigation. Several people were hurt after an explosion and fire in Decatur, Illinois on Sunday. The explosion occurred at the Arch Daniels Midland Processing Complex at approximately 7.11 p.m. That's from a statement from ADM. Heavy smoke could be seen coming from the area. Decatur Fire Department responded to the scene and the facility was evacuated. However, the fire department said no private homes were evacuated. The cause of the explosion is not confirmed at this time. 
President Biden wraps up his visit to Vietnam today. He's in the country to deepen ties with Vietnam as part of efforts to reduce America's reliance on China. Biden's visit is the first by a U.S. president to Vietnam since Donald Trump's 2019 trip. The president met with Vietnamese leaders to promote the growth of a technology-focused Vietnamese economy. He also engaged in discussions for ways to improve stability in the region. Yorktown High, Yorktown High School head football coach Ryan Naltzman said their football field was vandalized and that the individual that did it was caught. The coach said the team and community members came together Saturday to repair the field and he was pleased to see that happen, with 20 student athletes showing up as well as several community members. Victoria County Commissioners meet today at 10 a.m. at the Victoria County Courthouse. We have some items from the agenda. They discuss and consider the purchase of a utility trailer for the elections office. They also consider approval of the renewal contractual services agreement between Victoria Regional Juvenile Justice Center and the Region 3 Education Service Center. Virtual meeting options are available if you cannot attend the meeting in person. A new Texas law aimed at curbing animal abuse bans those convicted of animal cruelty, including those involved with dog fighting, from owning any kind of animal for five years after their first criminal offense. Read this story by the Texas Tribune on our website, CrossroadsToday.com. We want to invite you all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and just search Crossroads Today Plus. And now let's take one last look at your viewer poll before we go to that look at weather. So today we asked you, in what way can your school district improve? Let's take a look. 59% of you say teacher pay, yes. 5% of you say classroom size, 12% of you say facility repairs, and 24% of you said other. Thank you for taking part in 10 days viewer poll. Now let's go ahead and get that final look at our forecast, those chance of chances of precipitation from Trey. There you go, yes, we're gradually gonna see those in our forecast, not today though, but we'll get there. And I feel like temperature currently in the 70s and 90s and near 100 degrees by 3 o'clock in the afternoon will be our uh, high temperature time of day, of course. And I'm seeing a few clouds on the outside, otherwise the sunny skies today. Hot temperatures, not as hot as we have been seeing, but still hot enough to be careful on the outside if you're doing anything in the afternoon. Overnight lows, well, starting off with highs, as we start with that 98 degrees today. Now the overnight lows well into the 70s. And then for your highs tomorrow on your Tuesday in the 90s, once again, upper 90s or so around the region. Extended forecast for us, keeping the hot temperatures in. Low 90s with rain chances coming up toward the end of the weekend of the weekend. Looking forward to that. In the meantime, try your best to stay cool, Carolina. Thank you, Trey, and thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful Monday. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today, and join James, Don, Matt, Karina, and Gina today for 25 News Now at 5, 6, and 10.